Chapter number 26, The Fundamental Principles of Material Nature, verse 21, right? Yatat sarvam gunasvacham, santam bhagavatam padam, Yahur Vasudin Vakyam Chittam Tan Mahatmakam Yatat Sarva Gunam Swacham Santam Bhagavata Padam Yahur Vasudin Vakyam Chittam Tam Mahat Makam Yatat Sarva Gunam Swacham Yatat Sarva Gunam Swacham Yet <laughs> 
Word for word, yeah. Which? Yeah. That. That for Gunamu. The more goodness. Smart Chandu. Clear. Shantam. Sober. Bhagavata. Of the personality of Godhead. Of the personality of Godhead. Adam. Adam. The status of understanding. The status of the understanding. Yeah. 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 Which, Which uh, who, uh, who, uh, is called Vasudeva Akyam. Vasudeva Akyam. By the name Vasudeva. By the name Vasudeva. Chittam. Chittam. Consciousness. Consciousness. Tat. 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 Mahat. Mahatmakam. Manifested in the Mahatattva. Manifested in the Mahatattva. So this section of the Bhagavatam is quite technical, so it requires a little bit of preliminary knowledge to understand this, but it's, if you listen carefully, you can get an idea. The mode of goodness, which is clear, sober status of understanding the personality of Godhead, which is generally called Vasudeva, or consciousness, becomes manifest in the Mahatattva. I'll repeat it again. Please repeat the mode of goodness, which is the clear, clear, sober status of understanding. So what status of understanding? The personality of Godhead. Personality of Godhead. Which is generally called Vasudeva. Generally called Vasudeva. Or consciousness. Consciousness becomes manifest in the Mahatma. Becomes manifest in the Mahatma. To the Vasudeva manifestation of the status of understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead is called pure goodness, the Sudhasattva. In the Sudhasattva status, there is no infringement of the other qualities, namely passion and ignorance. In the Vedic literature, there is mention of the Lord's expansion as the four personalities of Godhead, Vasudeva, Sankarsana, Vajuma and Aniruda. Here in the reappearance of the Mahatapa, the four expansions of Godhead occur. He was seated within the super soul, expands first as Vasudev. The Vasudev stage is free from infringement by the material desires and is the status in which one can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead for the objective which is described in the Bhagavad Gita as Abhuta. This is another feature of the Mahatattva. The Vasudeva expansion is also called Krishna consciousness, where it's free from all tinges of material passion and ignorance. This clear state of conscious of understanding helps one to know the Supreme Personality of Daya. The Vasudeva the Vasudeva status is also explained in the Sitra which refers to the knower of the field of activities as well as the superknower. The living being who has occupied a particular type of body knows that body, but the superknower, Vasudeva, knows not only a particular type of body, but also the field of activities in all the different varieties of bodies. In order to be situated in clear consciousness or Krishna consciousness, one must worship Vasudev. Vasudev is Krishna alone. When Krishna or Vishnu is alone without the company of his eternal energy, he is Vasudev. When he is accompanied by his internal potency, he is called Dwarka 
To have clear consciousness or Krishna consciousness, one has to worship Vasudeva. It is also explained in the Bhagavad Gita that after many, many births, one surrenders to Vasudeva. Such a great soul is very rare. In order to get released from the false ego, one has to worship Sankarsha. Sankarsha is also worshipped to Lord Shiva. The snakes which cover the body of Lord Shiva are representations of Sankarsana, and Lord Shiva is always absorbed in meditation upon Sankarsana. One who is actually a worshiper of Lord Shiva as a devotee of Sankarsana can be released from the false material ego. If one wants to get free from mental disturbances, one has to worship Aniruddha. For this purpose, worship of the moon planet is also recommended in the Vedic literature. So if they fix in one's intelligence, one has to worship Pradyumna, who is reached through the worship of Brahma. These matters are explained in the Vedic literature. intoxication, various types of uh, wasting time doing absolutely nothing. In other words, wandering aimlessly in this world without any direction. This is the mode of ignorance. The mode of passion is a little higher, but one is fixed in developing material gain. But one works very hard in order to get some kind of material benefit such as money or some nice material arrangement in order to find some kind of happiness through the body, the mind, and the senses. And this is the mode of passion. So these two modes pretty much govern the activities of the material world, at least in the present society we have worldwide, not just in America, but in everywhere. Um, higher than that, and what is recommended is called what's called subtle group. Or that level of consciousness where one frees themselves from a hard struggle of material existence and develops finer qualities of material life, such as appreciation and engagement in yoga, in spiritual literature, poetry, art, uh, music, various types of uh, uh, intellectual pursuits centered around self-development. These are a lot of goodness, and one is very charitable by nature. They like to get involved with helping other people who are needy. So they, they, they engage in much charitable work in order to uplift people and then in their lower statuses to a better situation in life. Um, these people, they, they experience a little bit of happiness, where the other two modes, passion and ignorance, simply a struggle. That's all. 
Uh, so in that mode of goodness, one can practice spiritual life. Uh, one cannot practice spiritual life effectively or even to, even to a small degree as long as one is still engaged in activities of the lower mode. So one has to raise themselves up to that mode. And one can raise themselves up by cultivating good qualities. Such as humility, tolerance, patience, practices, um, kindness towards others, detachment from happiness and distress. In other words, the activities that go on and seen in this material world as a good person, a person who has uh, good qualities and works for the benefit of others on the material level, not on the spiritual level. So from that level of practice, one can gradually understand the nature of the Supreme Personality of God. In the lower modes, one fashion and ignorance, one cannot get an understanding of God. Although one may read about and also hear about it, that understanding remains distant because of the consciousness. So consciousness in its essence is pure. Is compared, it's also mentioned here, like a clear lake. Sometimes, if you go to some place where the water is very translucent, such as if you have been to Luxon, Jula, or the Himalayas and Hardware, there's a place there where you can look down from the top and you can see the bottom of the lake. It's not very deep, it's maybe it's about two, two meters deep. But still, you can still see the bottom because the water is clear. So consciousness is in its natural state is like that. It's pure, it's clear, it reflects its spiritual nature, and it can also uh, see, not see, but it can also understand the nature of the Supreme Lord. And so uh, as when we come to this material world and engage in material activities, we take on various, what we say, uh, qualities of those modes. We mention those qualities. And those qualities are like pieces of dirt, dirt over the clear consciousness. So when it becomes too dirty, that's the mode of ignorance. One can even understand that they are not this body. You try to tell someone in the lower modes of ignorance they are not this body, they have no understanding of that. Nor can they even rationalize it, nor can they even benefit, even if you show them practically. In the mode of passion, there is a little awakening, it's more like just like in the morning time, before the sun comes up, it's completely, completely dark. And then when the sun starts to rise, but still it's not over the horizon, there is a, the sound of the birds. The birds are alerted by their natural instinct and they start chirping. And they understand the sun is moving upward. Still, there is no visibility of the sun. When the sun reaches the horizon, then light starts to come in the atmosphere. And that light, that light in the atmosphere is like the mode of goodness. There is some light in life. In other words, one starts to come closer to their actual spiritual qualities. And then when the sun is fully up, that's like self-realization, or knowing themselves to be the eternal servant of God, part and parcel of God. So Krishna consciousness, the activities of devotional service, you see, go with it, uh, the activities of Krishna consciousness, such as chanting the holy names of the word, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare is the process of removing that dirt, that contamination, that darkness from the coverings of the soul. It is a process that actually is, it's based on spiritual sound vibration. And sound vibration is very powerful and can cause people's consciousness to 
act according to the quality of that sound. When that sound is spiritual, such as the name of the Lord, or hearing about the glories of the Lord and his forms and his uh, qualities and his activities, all of these, this transcendental sound vibration, we use the word transcendental means, trans means above, and dental means material. Transcendental means above the material. So when, when the consciousness reaches above the material, then one can understand the nature of the Supreme Lord, and, and one can see oneself, and one can see God, and one can understand the relationship with God through that realized consciousness, or we call it pure consciousness. So transcendental sound vibration is the means by which one awakens that consciousness. And one applies, uh, transcendental sound vibration comes in two forms. It comes in directly hearing the glories of the Lord, just as we described Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan or in Vrindavan or in the Torah. These are qualities that these are these are sound vibrations that reveal his actual characteristics and qualities, which attracts the devotee because Krishna is called all attractive. If God is not attractive, then he's not God. Then he's not attracted to everyone, he's still not God. And if we are not attracted to him, that means we have this covering over our consciousness. And because of that covering, although the kind of the attraction is there, it is not experienced because of the coverings. It might be explained just like if you, um, if you are, um, just like if you have jaundice. You know, jaundice is a disease of the liver, and it causes one to taste everything as bitter. And when you take Sugar cane, which is the natural cure for jaundice, it still tastes bitter because of the we take it because of the disease. But if one continues to take the sugar cane after some time, the sugar cane works to cure the disease, and then the natural sweetness comes. So our natural attraction to Krishna is covered because of our association with the materiality. But as we continue to take the medicine, which is the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra, and hearing the glories of the Lord gradually, we become more and more attracted to Krishna. And when that attraction reaches full, of course, never would know, to get to that stage of full attraction to Krishna means to be practically in the spiritual world. Never ever to be. But we can become so attracted to Krishna that we cannot. We can see only that our relationship with Krishna is the only thing that is really important in life because it gives us complete satisfaction and happiness because that is the nature of Krishna. And as we uh, practice these things, and the other aspect is the philosophical teachings that govern the activities of devotional service. So when we hear this knowledge, which we call philosophy and transcendental knowledge, we apply that to our day-to-day -day life. And then as we apply that, we get understanding of that knowledge in a practical sense. And then we change our life towards, again, hearing and chanting the voice more. So therefore, it says, Shrimpata Svankata Krishna Sra Purya Sra Nekirtana Vrindya Tosto Avatati Vidya Nati Surya Sita Nasta Prayeshu Avadrishu Nitya Bhagavadasya Di Uttama Svanki Bhakti Bhavati Nai Sriki That Krishna, when he sees that you're eager to know about him more and more, and you take up the process of hearing about him to achieve that knowledge, he personally, he says it, I cleanse away all of the contamination in your own heart that, that is there from lifetimes after lifetime. And then when the heart becomes somewhat clean, then the personality of God appears within the mind. 
And the process is, as we mentioned, to hear regularly the glories of the Lord. It's like if you're mad after money, that's all you think about. You think about, I'll get a job, or I'll have to work here, I'll go here, I'll make plans, I'll uh, get some kind of education, maybe in order to get the best jobs so I can have the most money. So one becomes absorbed in you know financial consciousness or money consciousness. And then one pretty much thinks about that practically throughout the day and then and then arranges their life in the same way. Some one people become girl conscious and boy conscious. They think of that all the time. That's all I can see, all I can think about. They become absorbed in that way, and they're always planning to enjoy in that way. So these are ten different types of material consciousness. But consciousness is the feature of life. And when consciousness is directed at Krishna, then life actually begins. Life actually begins. But life begins when we actually take up seriously our, our relationship with Krishna. That's easy. All we have to do is hear regulation. Nasta Pradesh or Pradesh Nityam Bhagavatam. Nityam means eternal. Bhagavatam, every day, regularly hearing that sound of vibration. And gradually the medicine is working. What is that medicine? It's clearing away the, the contamination of material life. Just like we have the example of this, this great king, Maharaj Pariksha. The whole Bhagavatam was spoken based on him wanting to become fully self-realized by hearing. He was a great king, not only great, but he had complete sovereignty into, over the entire world. He had a wonderful family, qualified wife, many, many, many followers. His armies were always in line. He had everything that a king could aspire for in perfection. But some little discretion happened in his life, and apparently he was cursed to die by a Brahmana in seven days. A very powerful but young Brahmana, cursed that he will die in seven days. So he was powerful enough to counteract the curse, but he didn't. Because he was thinking, here's a chance to go back to the spiritual world. Now I will give up all of my material occupations and still focus fully on uh, Lord. And sometimes it's easy to relinquish certain material things when they're not working, right? When things are not working, you know, just like the story of the, the uh, what was it called? The, uh, the grapes. So a fox is trying to jump up and reach the grapes. And he's jumping, jumping, jumping. He can't reach it. So he says, well, I renounce the grapes. He never had it in the first place. So he's just speaking of release. He's renouncing the idea, that's all. But he's not renouncing the object. So in the same way, um, if you have very little, then you think, well, there's nothing to renounce I mean. But if you have a lot materially and you're somewhat successful, then that kind of renunciation is renunciation. Because it's a sacrifice. And the word sacrifice is important because in order to become a Christian conscious, you have to make personal sacrifice. You have to give up the idea that you think you know how you can be happy in this world and accept that knowledge is coming from Krishna himself who teaches you, here's how you become happy. That is called intelligence. And by accepting that, then one can actually come to the point of real happiness and internal knowledge. And so the process of hearing is very, very essential. And gradually, the consciousness raises higher and higher to the platform where 
Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita, when you thus learn the truth, you'll know that all living beings are my parts and parcels. They're in me and they are mine. One sees Krishna in everything and sees everybody within the energy of Krishna, not separately. Separation is material consciousness. We make so many separations in this world. We separate people by nationality, by gender, by desires in life, by activities, and so many categories of divisions in this world. But this is all what we call the material energy in order to somehow or other um, gain something from that activity. But in the spiritual, the spiritual consciousness, one doesn't see things separate. One sees, sees the Lord and everything and everything in the Lord. And therefore, they're always in the in mood of trying to learn more about the Lord and to try to serve the Lord at the same time. Because without service to the Lord, one doesn't really progress very fast in devotional service. So Krishna explains that. Only by undivided devotional service can I be known as I am standing before you and thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. So through Seva, we actually end the process of shravanam, hearing and serving, whereas the other consciousness becomes more and more Krishna conscious, the spiritual consciousness. And when we get to that point, then everything becomes clear. It's just like when the sun is out. The, 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 everything is like lit, lit up, you can see nicely. The sun can be up, but if the clouds are there, just like today, you can't see the sun, but the sun is there. If you go above the clouds, you'll see there's a bright sunshine, and you won't see any clouds or any darkness. No rain. Everything will be clear. But because of our vision from another level, it appears that the sun is not there, but it is. So Krishna is there always, everywhere, within the hearts of all living beings. He's there in the deity. He's there in our in devotional service. But to raise one consciousness to that level, one has to hear regularly the glories of the Lord. Satan Prasangam, Mamaviriya Sambhida, Bhavanti Ritkarna Rasayana Pada. And that's verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's actually you know, probably just did the verse, 325 25. It's the last chapter. I'll read the whole verse. It's actually quite nice. 325, 25. In the association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and to the heart. By cultivating such dhammas, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation, and thereafter he is freed, and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begins. So this is the essence of the practice of devotional service, to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, and to offer ourselves to engage in practical devotional service. Simply by these two processes, one will understand everything clearly and have a complete understanding of their relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is eternal, never changing. We change, but our relationship with God never changes. It's always there. And Krishna's waiting. Hey, wake up. What are you doing wasting your time in this world? Come back to me. <laughs> he says like that, just to somehow or other remind us where our ultimate treasure is in relationship to him in devotional speech. Okay, so I'll stop there. Any questions? Comments?
I wish you had been accepted for the person that you go to speak. So, Maharaj, I have one question. You said in the beginning of the class that uh, if a person is in the lower mode, even if uh, we speak to them or even if they hear and understand, if they listen or they speak in another language. Uh, uh, you said in the beginning of the class, Maharaj, that uh, the person who are in the lower mode, uh, such as mode of ignorance, if we if if they hear about God or read about God, they will not understand anything. No. So uh, even if they are in the association of devotees hearing about God, will their consciousness will not be raised more than well when the wood is wet, you can't light it. So the wood has to dry out. So according to the drying process, when there is some drying, you might get a little spark and some fizzle and the wood will maybe show some smoke. So as a drying, the healing process and the association with the wood is the drying process. And gradually, then, if they continue to do that over a period of time, and gradually their consciousness is actually being raised up in that by that by that area. And then they're no longer in the movement with the ignorance. But as long as they remain in the cover like that, it's, it's like it's like standing in front of the mirror and eating something in the mirror and think that the person in the mirror is eating. There's no, it just looks like it. Although they may also be in the proximity of devotees, their consciousness is not able to assimilate that mood. This consciousness is the identification of our existence. You could be sitting here and you could be thinking about, you know, India. So you're in India, you're not here. Wherever your consciousness is, that's where you are. Of course, you can move your consciousness around, but any place you bring your consciousness is exactly where you are. Because you are consciousness. So if you're if you're here, then you're connected to what's going on here. Even though you could be physically here, you may not be here. You're somewhere else in consciousness. Consciousness is everything. Uh, all of question, So, uh, Maharaj, uh, like uh, we meet many people like this, and uh, if you want to preach them, it will be very difficult for for the first time. So, how to attract? People like of the consciousness, uh, like my personal lower consciousness. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Well, of course, it depends on the person. But we, what we do is we use different methods of getting people's attraction, their attention. One of the things we do is care time. So as people come to care time, they think, oh, it's a nice music. And they may also feel happy and start to dance. When we used to go out of Marina, we would go to places where people would congregate and they'd be having their intoxications and doing whatever they're doing. But then they would hear the Hare Krishna devotees coming, chanting, and they would think, oh, these guys really know how to party. <laughs> so we join the party. 
So we find that that happens. Of course, they don't. Of course, they go back to their own ways after we leave. But there's some attraction there, and that attraction there is benefit for that. That they that it happens more often than the attraction becomes stronger. Or if you give them some prashada, prashada is Krishna in the form of transcendental food. That also brings them closer. And people can identify with that easily. But trying to speak philosophy, you just, you just waste your time. Thank you so much. Yes, we have one more question over there. Please, if I have a missing the lotus feet, it's uh, so amazing to hear you with such deep divinity in your voice. So, Maharaj, um, like there are so many wonderful lectures online of Srila Prabhupada, many pure devotees. So, how, why is it that I don't feel, I don't always feel the same divinity and the same uh, effect on my heart when I hear like recordings? And how can I derive more benefit by hearing the recordings because it's well we can say you do feel some attraction and some divinity depending on who you're hearing from. So if you hear from your spiritual master immediately, you'll feel some attraction, right? Yes, Maharaj, but it's not I mean some many times I feel it's not the same, like now when I'm hearing from you, I'm feeling I don't always feel like it. Sometimes I may, but um, not always I feel the same kind of divinity and attraction. So could that be because of offenses or? Well, you might say, if you're not hungry and somebody gives you food, you're not attracted. But if you're hungry, then the attraction is there. So it depends on your state of existence at the time you're hearing also. So, so how do I increase my thirst for hearing? Stop. Stop trying to enjoy the material energy. <laughs> That's one way. Because as we stop trying to enjoy this material world, our attraction for Krishna consciousness becomes stronger and stronger. We may be engaged in devotional service, but we still may be looking out at the material energy for some satisfaction, some happiness, some benefit. So when that's there, it's blocking that receptivity. That has to be cleared away. So therefore we say, if you really want to make progress in devotional service, you have to be convinced that there's no happiness in this material world. And if you're not convinced, then become convinced. By hearing, by associating, by practicing devotional service. And as that uh, attraction increases, which it naturally will, because the process works. It works. You just have to apply yourself to the process. Even when we're in the process, we hear something and it just somehow or other, we, we may acknowledge what we hear, but sometimes when we hear, we get a realization of what we hear. That's a hollow, whole level, higher level. It's like if I say, well, you're not this body. How many times have you heard that I'm not this body? But when your consciousness is in a, in a very receptive mood, you hear when you're not this body, you realize you're not this body. You can understand, yes. It becomes, becomes the difference between reading a menu and eating this food. Mm -hmm. Well, in sense, you're saying that uh, to be very, very careful to not let uh, the mind and the senses enjoy uh, in any way in this world that you just, just when you do that you're just piling on the contamination of the rest of the world. 
Krishna consciousness is cutting away that contamination and material activities and material desires. I'm not saying material activities and material activities with a desire to enjoy those activities. That's material desire. That causes you to not be able to understand or even appreciate or experience the happiness of emotional centers. Material activities can be performed as a basis for maintaining ourselves in this material world, but they are not the source of happiness. They're just necessary. That's all. They're necessary. If you have a family, there's responsibility. If you have occupation, there's responsibility. But these material activities are needed. That's all. They're not the source of happiness. Happiness is the nature of the soul's existence, and that can only be experienced through something that is above this material world, because we are above the material world in nature, we spiritual. We have nothing to do with this world, but we're in it. So practice, yeah, that's why Krishna, when Arjuna said to Krishna, uh, you're, you're telling me, Krishna, to control the mind, but I think it's like trying to control the wind. The mind is restless, turbulent, unsteady, and always moving, always difficult to control. Uh, to control the mind is like controlling the mind. And Krishna, what does he say in the next verse? He says, Abhyasena Tukuntaya Vairagya Tigriyate. So he said, practice controlling the mind, practice engaging the mind in devotional activity, and give up material activities, give up material desires. You can't, you can't enjoy. Material and spiritual simultaneously, it's not possible. One will push out the other. So, in proportion, that's what you're experiencing. So, practice that. Yes, I want to become Krishna conscious. And one of the activities that bring my consciousness to that stage of perfection. So, we just mentioned. Hearing, chanting, association, taking Krishna Prashad, worshiping the Lord, coming to the temple, offering obeisances to the Lord. All of these bring us closer to our pure consciousness. Is that okay? Yeah. Hey, Shana, so give up your love for Maya. <laughs> Maya means what is not. It's Maya is it's just like, you know what Maya is? You, you can see her, but you can't you can't enjoy her. For the an example, if you see smoke floating in the in the air, try to grab it. Can you grab smoke? Where is it? Okay, that's Maya. And look, you look, you can see it. Apparently, it's there. But when you try to go for it, there's no substance. So, yeah. if you go for Krishna, then you, you'll find that you know, all, of your, all of your desires are fulfilled perfectly and completely because Krishna is Mula. The name for Krishna is Mula, means he's the root of all existence. You can find everything in Krishna. Everything. Yes, another question. And what is business of my brothers? Yes. What is uh, you are mentioning right now? We don't have nothing to do in this world, and now our aim is to go back to spiritual world. But for someone like who is are convinced of it. For them, this world is real. Whatever they see, they feel, they, for them it is real. And uh, 
just the opposite of the material world. It has its own existence, which is completely separate. So, you, know, you say, you want to be free from death? Yeah. Okay, go back to the spiritual world. There's no death there. Birth, there's no disease, there's no old age. There's no job in there's so many things that are not there. <laughs> so there's no difficulties in the spiritual world. So you can process a negation rather than try to explain what it's like in the spiritual world. Thank you for coming. Hare Krishna. Please come again. Uh, yeah, so it's if you try to explain what it's like in the spiritual world, it's very difficult for people to understand that because we don't even know what it's like. All we can talk about is the qualities that in the spiritual world exhibit, such as eternality, unlimited happiness, variety, and various types of activities centered around Krishna. But well, we can tell that what is the spiritual world and the rest of the Bible and Vyakta Vyakta Sanatana Krishna says in the Gita. That's my hope, it's eternal. When you go back there, you never come back to this material world again. So many, very few people are convinced about spiritual life by describing the spiritual life. It's not a type of preaching that we really get into. We try to help them to somehow make a solution to the problems of their materialism through the process of Krishna consciousness. That more, that they can identify with that more. Um, what can you say about this spiritual world that will people will be convinced? Don't think it's a place to visit and then come back here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you go to you know, India and you come back and be trained. <laughs> no, it's hard. It's not a way to preach. You know. If when they ask questions, like, okay, you're saying Chanda and Krishna and Koda to Godhead, but why do you have to say go back to God? You can say generally Krishna be happy. He said that about going back to God, and that's that comes later after they really been somewhat you know uh, developed in their Krishna consciousness. Like after making a stage, can we be able to experiment? Can we be able to experience it? Like any relation of relation that we have the spiritual world what it was like, and we experience it. Not our spiritual world, like realizing this, like either this material world is false and the spiritual world is true. Like, well, you don't tell them it's false because it's not. It's real, but it's not. It's temporary. That's why it's false. The world is temporary. But you have to say this world is suffering. That's what you could. There's the way to get there. They know it's suffering, even though they may appear to act like it's they're okay. They're not. They just that's in the that's a program that you have to play in order to live in this world. Because if you know if you think this world is miserable, you can't live here. 
become suicidal and we become, you know, crazy. So uh, you have to teach them that ultimately, you, you, you know, there's other, there's other ways to become happy other than the way you're trying to become happy, which is not working. So, you know, teaching to chant groups of Prashadam and invite to the temple. Give them a book, especially. You can learn about themselves, about Krishna. If I try to explain something, just like I'll give you an example. Tell me if you can figure this out. Okay, in the spiritual world, everything is eternal. Nothing deteriorates. But in the spiritual world, they eat. Like Krishna says, what is cow? They're poison, they eat. So where does the food go? If it's eternal. So, so you eat the globe, and it still exists. <laughs> So can you explain that? <laughs> no, but it's a, it's a reality, you know, that nothing deteriorates. It's all made of the same nature, chintana, pure spiritual energy. You can't, you know, call, you know, pizza hot and have a pizza delivered to the spiritual world. It doesn't work. <laughs> So, yeah, so Chad, that's an example of how you can understand, you know, what it's like in the spiritual world. That's just one example. There's others. Yeah, so just keep it simple when you preach. You get to the right to the point. Yes, question. I can't see the time, so I don't know. I guess. Well, all right. That last question then. I'll be very loud, man. Maharaj, you beautifully. Uh, thank you so much for this wonderful class. You shared a very um, amazing point which touched my heart, other than everything which you shared. Um, if you give an example about the devil being accumulated because of the more of passion and ignorance, however, if you quote in the verse uh, from Srimad Bhagavatam specifically talking about if Krishna wants, he can remove the dirt right away. But if he sees you, he sees you trying to, he helps you sometimes. But he has that power also. He wants to show special mercy if you do that. Lord Chaitanya did that. He gave love of God to people immediately right on the spot when he was here. I had a follow up question, but that's covered. I was just thinking about there is enough frustration with the material world, and someone is completely fed up with the material world, and the inclination is there to go to the spiritual world. But the mold of passion and ignorance keep pushing away the desire to actually do the motions. So the question is that pay attention. You know, pay attention. If you don't pay attention, you can't get out. That's the problem. People, people's attention is on so many things. Attention to the process of getting out. The example is a man is locked in prison. And um, there's a wall. He's a blind man. He's a wall and all around the prison. But there's an opening in the wall in one section of the wall. So he's blind. So he's trying to find that opening so he can get out. So he's feeling the wall. So he's just going kind of going closer and closer to the opening. And when he gets straight to the opening, a fly jumps on his nose and he gets irritated and starts to chase the fly away and he misses the opening. So we get distracted because we're distracted towards something material, 
that we can keep our consciousness focused on Krishna and devotional service. So keeping the idea is to practice keeping your mind, heart, and your activities spiritual. The more you practice that, the more you become stronger and more natural. But the practice has to be done in the right mood, that's also. But I want it, I want to serve Krishna, I want to please Krishna. Okay, thank you. Thank you.